pull up her mother and her two cops are walking towards me. They're getting closer and closer. They're getting so close that at some point I have to do something about it. What would you do? I'm Roy Gallit, a wildlife photographer and an environmental diplomat. My images have won hundreds of international awards and my videos and images have been featured in places like BBC, National Geographic and many other awesome magazines. I'm also guiding special expedition in these extreme conditions. But before we start, please comment below and tell me what is your favorite animal and perhaps I'll talk about it in one of my next videos. You can find polar bears all over the northern part of the northern hemisphere. The southern they go is Hudson Bay in Canada, but you can find them in Alaska, northern Canada with the northern islands and across northern uh, Russia and Svalbard and the Russian Arctic archipelagos like Franz Josef Land and Nova Zemlya and all over that area and of course the northern ice cap. Svalbard is a Norwegian archipelago. It's just about halfway between Norway and the North Pole. It's about a thousand kilometers south of the North Pole itself. Svalbard is an archipelago consisted of several islands, the largest one being Spitsbergen, the second largest is Nord Auslandet, and the third one are third one and fourth one are Egeria and Barentsoya. Svalbard is a very unique place. Actually, there is not really seasons like you know wherever you live, but most of the times it's either the dark period or the light period. It's in the winter time, it's four months of darkness, and in the summertime, it's four months of daylight, meaning the sun doesn't set in the summer and doesn't rise at all in the winter time. During this short spring and autumn, the sun switches from daylight to nighttime or the other way around. So almost every day, the day gets longer by almost an hour during the season around March 21st, which is the equilibrium between daytime and nighttime. So the day and night are in the same length, 12 hours and 12 hours. If you want to see polar bears, usually you want to come not in the winter time because it's really dark and it's really hard to find them. You don't want to come in the autumn where it's really hard to find them because there's not, not, not enough ice. Uh, but you should come in the springtime or the summertime where there is still plenty of ice and polar bears live where the ice is. They rely on the ice to survive and they can't survive without ice. So you know where to look for them. In the springtime, everything is still frozen solid. So I arrived there on snowmobiles. So we drive the snowmobiles across the frozen fjord. You just drive straight through the, the sea ice, just driving on the sea ice, which is frozen uh, with the snowmobiles. Of course, you've got to be really, really careful because if the ice is too thin, you can just fall through and, and you don't want to do that because the ice, is, the water is freezing cold. You'll lose your snowmobile and you end up risking your life. People have actually died this way. So you don't want to do that. So what we do is we carry around a drill with a really long tip and when we reach an uncertain, uncharted or no one has driven on ice, we just go a few hundred meters or a few dozens of meters and just drill through the ice and hoping not to reach water. If you reach water, you know the ice is too thin and you don't want to drive your snowmobile around it. So you can walk on ice which is relatively thin, a few centimeters uh, wide, but you cannot drive on it with your snowmobile. So you gotta be really, really careful. In the summertime, of course, all the ice has melted, so you cannot drive a snowmobile. So we're using a boat. So what we do is I charter a, a boat, a private boat, a small boat, 12 people only. And with that boat, we can go across the archipelago of Svalbard looking for polar bears. In the springtime, I'm taking three people only with the snowmobile. Why only three people? Because we want to keep our footprint as small as possible. 
And if you take more than that, you make too much noise, you're too visible, and it's really getting hard and almost impossible to find polar bears. So you gotta keep your expedition to a minimum that you can. If you can, if you can work alone, that's one thing. You don't wanna be there alone, because uh, you gotta have backup, you gotta have somebody watching your back when you're photographing polar bears. So you gotta have a good team, you gotta have the best team around with you, and I'm taking three people who are fortunate enough uh, to be there photographing, seeing, experiencing those polar bears. So how do we deal with the cold? The cold conditions are really tough. I mean, it's, uh, it can get to minus 30, minus 40 degrees centigrade, and it can be really windy. Okay, so uh, you gotta be prepared for the cold. So to be prepared for the cold, I wear several layers of special Arctic gear. I'll talk about it in one of my next videos. I'm gonna show you the gear that I'm using, but I'm uh, using a base layer, a mid layer, a top layer, and then above all that, I've got my overalls, my Arctic overalls, which keeps me very nice and warm, even in those frigid conditions. Because remember, you can walk around at minus 20, minus 30, wearing less than that. But if you gotta stay steady and not move for a few hours, you gotta be dressed extra warm, because if you're not moving, you're not generating that body heat to keep you nice and warm. And if you start uh, uh, freezing, if you start losing your body temperature and you start shaking and you start risking being hypothermic, uh, you don't wanna do that. And of course, don't, let me, don't get me started on frostbites. So where do we eat or sleep? So when we are out in the field, we're taking uh, special uh, dry tech food with us. So dry tech is a dried, frozen, vacuum meal. So the expiry date on those are like eight years, 10 years or whatever. And when we, when we were out in the field, we just take it out of the, of the backpack, we pour some boiling water from our thermos and you gotta wait for five to eight minutes. Pretty cools down by then. You add a little bit of more warm water just to heat it up and then you eat it before it freezes. Uh, so that's what we eat. I actually, I actually like that, okay? Uh, it's pretty good. I actually bought some uh, for home just to show the kids. But that's what we eat when we are out in the field. When we stay and where we stay, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, uh, we have a chef who's making very nice food, very nice meals, so you've got a nice selection to choose from. Uh, and where do we sleep? So we sleep in a nice abandoned Soviet hotel, and we're, uh, uh, it's heated and we have running water, hot water, uh, you, know, charge, you have a generator to charge your batteries and all your equipment, uh, no cell phone reception, no internet connection, don't worry about that but at least we have a nice warm place to put our head and even take a nice shower, which is not taken for granted in, under these conditions. And what about toilet breaks? So people ask me a lot about that. Uh, so if you gotta go number one, and if you're a guy, uh, it's really easy. So you have a zipper in your overalls coming from the top, a zipper coming from the bottom, and you just leave the, the bottom zipper, you take it out, do whatever you do, and put it back in and close everything. If you're a lady, it's a little bit more complicated. So you can either use a device called a Shiwi, which helps ladies uh, urinate like guys. Uh, it's just like a funnel thing. Or you can, if you're a lady, you take this suit off and you hold it between your legs and you do what you do and you put it back. Uh, and uh, if, you're, uh, if you have to go number two, well, don't. <laughs> but if you do, you go behind a nice uh, pile of snow. Uh, you, you gotta have, uh, you gotta be re uh, ready. You gotta know that there are no polar bears or no risk around there. Uh, and you just dig a hole in the snow, do what you do, and then cover it up. Uh, that's what we do. So again, preferably not. Finding polar bears is not that easy because well, I mean, bears are white, and the background is all white. So what we do is we go on a high level plane or a high hill or something like that at the edge of the fjord and with binoculars we search around, we scan the area and I'll tell you I got one of the best 
scouts out there and he can find polar bears uh, where I can't even guess where they are so I mean you just you look around you see nothing and then this guy goes oh my god I saw a mother and two cubs and I'm like where here look I'm just looking with the binoculars and I where so I mean yeah you gotta have that specialty sometimes I find polar bears uh, just to be honest but most of the times uh, my local scout specialist he does the most amazing job he has polar bear magnet eyes <laughs> so finding polar bears is the tricky part so what we do is when we were asleep this scout this pro guy goes out uh, by himself searches for the polar bears and just when we wake up he just sends us a uh, message on the satellite phone and tells us exactly where to go that's the best way to do it that way you don't waste any time searching so basically there are three types of polar bears one is the butt bear so butt bears don't really like the attention and if they see us coming or if they see any human coming they just go away walk away of course we don't chase them because we don't want to bother them uh, we don't want to harass the bears we don't want to harass the animals and uh, even if we do approach them we only see their butts so hence the name butt bears the second kind of bear is the indifferent one and these are the best kinds of bears because it might sound like they're rude but actually they're perfectly fine with our presence so they don't mind us being there and photographing and the third kind of bear is the aggressive bear and these guys don't play around they don't like the attention uh, they might try to charge at you attack you they might consider you as food and of course we don't want that either so we don't stick around uh, so we only work with bears that are perfectly fine with us being there remember it's their home and we are the guests getting close to polar bears isn't that easy so you don't just approach a polar bear and the best way to do it is let the polar bear or basically any other animal come to you get closer to you so we basically see where they're going and we place ourselves in that area vicinity not directly in their path but somewhat in that direction so when they're getting closer they're getting closer to us and if the an animal any wildlife is in control they feel a lot more safe a lot more secure and it makes sense okay so we don't chase them we don't approach them we don't hunt them down we don't want to do that you don't want to do that so again respect is the key if a polar bear gets too close of course we have protection okay we have a gun as required by law in Svalbard you have to carry a rifle uh, we have a flare gun to make noise and sound and scare bears away and we have bear spray which is basically like a pepper spray uh, which you don't want to use against the wind <laughs> it's a very bad idea the best way to use these protection is don't use them at all if you get into a situation where you had to use one of the protection measures you gone too far you went too close and we've never done it we've never had to use it we really respect the animals and we really respect the polar bears and we don't want to come into any situation where we might have to even remotely shoot in the direction of a polar bear because once you do that of course it's bad from so many reasons but also that bear won't trust you ever again I mean don't, don't shoot the bear <laughs> but even if you try to scare it it won't trust you so don't I mean don't go into that situation if your bear comes near you you just get away that's why you gotta keep your distance you get away from the bear you drive you wear on snowmobiles we get away from the polar bears we don't pose any danger to them or to ourselves and this is the best way to be around nature don't get into situations that you cannot get out of of course in all of these expeditions in the springtime we have special permits and those permits from the uh, Norwegian government from the governor of, uh, of Svalbard those permits allows us to go where no one else can go so don't try to do what I did if you don't have those permits don't try to go close to polar bears without special permits because you are breaking the law so we without the permits you can stay about 500 meters away 
uh, from polar bears. Uh, with the permits you can go uh, closer, uh, but again, you have to have those special permits to go to those areas where we are active and to get closer to polar bears. How do we get out? So after we finished photographing polar bears, you, you, again, you retreat in the same way you came in. So you just turn around, you, you drive away, uh, not crossing their path, not disturbing them in any way. You pack everything after you've gone in enough distance away from the polar bears. By the way, the same with eating. So if you're eating something, you gotta get really far away from polar bears so they don't smell the food and try to approach you. And you do not want polar bears associating humans with food. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments below and let me know if you're interested in getting closer to polar bears because I'm taking expeditions over there. And if you want to know anything new about polar bears, write me down below, let me know what you think, let me know if you think I'm crazy or professional, if I'm uh, doing the right stuff in your opinion, uh, if you've seen my films and if you haven't, just go online, just google my name, Roy Gallitz, and you can even check out the wonderful film uh, Snow Bears in the BBC and PBS Nature, narrated by Kate Winslet. I'm uh, one of four uh, cinematographers who worked on that film and I'm really proud of it. The, the production did an excellent job in that film. So let me know what you think and write in the comments. In the next video, I'll explain about polar bear photography in the summertime, where there is no ice, we go around with the boat and we lower zodiacs to get closer to polar bears and when we get close, that's when the magic happens. Again, I remind you to subscribe, hit that notification bell button and stay posted on future videos on polar bears and whatever animals you wrote down in the comments that I'm going to talk about in the future and let me know what you think. So yeah, please subscribe and see you soon.